So I want to start off our lecture today with this quote. He who fails to plan is planning to fail by Winston Churchill. So today we're going to start the class off with a lecture on personal financial planning as a part of our class on financial literacy. Here's what we're going to cover in the lecture today. We're going to start by defining personal financial planning. We're going to talk about why it's important and we're going to walk through the planning process step by step. So as you know from the reading you did for today, our textbook defines uh, financial planning as the process of managing your money to achieve personal economic satisfaction. This definition is totally fine. I would personally like to propose that we include the concept of financial wellness as this is something that we you know, have talked about and will continue to talk about in this course. So I propose that we define it as creating a path to financial wellness where you feel comfortable with your personal financial situation. I'll then ask you guys the question, why is financial planning important? Thank you for your, uh, for your thoughts on that. Uh, I'm now going to go through five key reasons, some of which you guys touched on. Uh, the first one, you know, being related to, uh, you know, effectively obtaining, using, and protecting your resources. And this really gets at, uh, you know, how financial planning enhances your quality of life and increases your satisfaction as you reduce that uncertainty you may have about, you know, how you spend your money um, and, and about your needs and resources. So it can help you, uh, you know, then make informed decisions in your day-to-day -day life on how you spend your money um, because you have this plan in place. Uh, number two, so, uh, you know, poor management of your money, you know, can lead to some real consequences like excessive debt, bankruptcy, you know, and depending on, you know, family and friends for economic support. Uh, you know, these are, these are things you really want to try and avoid. Um, now, the, some of these uh, financial disasters, you know, arguably you can't completely avoid them. There may be situations that are out of your control. However, uh, poor management of your own resources can lead to these things. Um, so basically, a financial plan can really help you um, in, in managing your resources well and help you avoid these things. Uh, number three, it can really improve your personal relationships. Um, you know, the like we talked about on the previous slide, uh, these financial hardships can cause real stress. You know, on you, on your family. Um, so they're they're really things you want to try and avoid. And uh, having a financial plan can help you avoid those things and thereby free up, uh, you know, your energy to uh, spend time and, and invest in the, the people that you care about. It also gives you a sense of freedom. Um, you don't have the worries of, of not knowing you know what your plan is because uh, it gives you a plan. You now know where where you want to go, uh, what you need to do to get there and uh, can can give you confidence in, in that way. And then finally, it's really foundational for managing your money well. Um, you know, next week we're going to talk about budgeting. We're going to talk about how to create a budget, how to set up a budget, and then how to maintain and keep that with some tips and tricks for for doing those things. But uh, we can't we can't set up a budget until we have gone through the financial planning process and created financial goals, uh, because those goals will then inform how we allocate our money, how we you know how much money we put in the categories of our budget. So it, it's really foundational in, in managing your money well. Here's a diagram which you probably remember seeing in the textbook uh, about the financial planning process. So could someone please walk us through this diagram? Thank you for walking us through it. And now we're just going to dive right in with uh, step one. Determine your personal financial situation. This involves making a list of your sources of income, the different expenses you have, uh, cell phone, uh, you know, groceries each month, um, your rent each month, uh, things that you need to live. Uh, you're going to make a list of any savings that you may have, 
and also uh, of any debts that you may have. If you have any student loan debt, you want to include the amount, you know, include, write down the amount you have to pay each month and, you know, the expense associated with that. Uh, and this, once you've, you've, you've compiled this list, it, it kind of gives you a snapshot of your personal financial situation. Uh, in, in this step of developing your goals, you also want to think about your, your feelings about money and, and what they're based on. Uh, are they based on social pressures? You know, uh, are they based on household needs? Someone who uh, is just coming out of school uh, and doesn't have a family yet, you know, their, their, their needs are going to be different than someone who's married, has a couple kids, and, and, you know, has responsibilities for providing for those kids. Um, their needs are going to be very different. Um, and then also, do you have a desire for luxury items? Uh, do you have a high taste? Um, you know, that's something you've got to think about and, uh, and, and reflect on, you know, whether, uh, and we'll get at this later on, you know, whether things that you're buying are wants or are they needs. Um, and again, we'll get into that later in the, in the, in the class today. Um, but your feelings about money are something that you do have to think about. So I want to ask you, what, what are some examples of financial goals? Thanks for your thoughts on that. Uh, I also have a, a short list here of a, a number of different goals, some of which you guys touched on. Uh, but you can see they range anything from, you know, a long-term, uh, more responsibility-based goal, like, you know, uh, establishing a retirement savings plan, the third one there, all the way to saving up for something fun, like a vacation, um, you know, that you, know, you may have to put money away uh, on a monthly basis to prepare for. Um, so they can really be a whole range of things, and it's really up to, you know, the individual to decide how they want to spend their money. So there's three primary types of, of goals. Uh, Short-term goals are ones that we would want to look to accomplish within a year. Intermediate goals, uh, probably within five years. And then long-term goals would be goals that, you know, would be longer than five years. So I'll ask the class, what are some examples of short-term goals? Thanks for your thoughts on that. What are some examples of long-term goals? Thanks for your thoughts on that. And then I, I know it's out of order, but what are your thoughts on intermediate goals? Thanks for your thoughts. Are any of you familiar with uh, the SMART approach? Awesome. Well, can you walk us through it? Thanks for walking us through it. Um, and again, just to you know, to iterate within the context of financial planning, your goals need to be specific. You need to understand, you know, what exactly you're trying to do. Uh, they need to be measurable. They need to have a dollar amount attached to them. If you're saving for a uh, vacation and that's going to cost you a thousand dollars, how much, you know, you need to make sure that you're on track to that thousand dollars. It needs to be achievable. So how much do you need to save each month, each month to reach that $1,000 for that vacation? Is it, uh, you know, is it going to be uh, $100 a month? You know, you gotta, you got to think about what you need to do to achieve it. Uh, it needs to be realistic. Um, you know, based on your income, it's got to be something you can afford. If you're in college, you can't expect to buy a new car every year. Um, and then it's got to be timely. Um, it, it's, you know, let's say it's, it's, uh, that vacation goal, like saving a thousand dollars we talked about, uh, that's gotta be, you know, let's say it's 10, it's going to be okay, 10 months. Um, and we need to save a hundred dollars then. And, uh, and, and in order to reach that goal within 10 months. So these are, those are the things you want to think about when you're thinking about your goals. And then step three is about thinking about different courses of action. Uh, this doesn't necessarily come after step two, but it is something that you have to think about. Um, so, A, are you are you content with where you are, with with the financial plan that you've been operating on for the past year? Uh, or do you need to expand it? Do you need to make some adjustments in, or change it? Um, are there some changes that you want to make? Or do you need to take an entirely new course of action from where you have, you know, been heading? Uh, are things that you want to think about? And then step four, evaluating your alternatives. What do you what do you need to give up 
uh, you know, in order to make a choice is really what we're getting at. And, and this is, this is, this is really about opportunity costs. And it's something that we're going to talk about more in depth later on in today's class. Um, but basically, uh, you know, if you decide that you're going to uh, save up for a vacation in 10 months, that may mean that you don't eat out quite as much uh, for those months leading up to the vacation. Uh, you, you have to make a trade-off. Um, and that's, that's really, again, we'll talk about that more later on in the class. Uh, but but making what what do you give up by making a choice is uh, is something that you want to think about when you're thinking about the alternatives. So step five is to you know start a to do list on what you need to do to reach your your financial goals. So if if one of those goals is uh, you know start start a savings account, then you need to uh, go to the bank and talk to someone at the bank about setting up a savings account. Uh, or uh, if you want, one of your goals is to um, start putting money away for retirement. Uh, you may need the help of, of of someone in your office, in you know maybe in human resources, to reach that goal, to talk you through what you need to do, and, and to talk with you about your options. Uh, so those are just some questions to ask yourself as you're talk, thinking about creating and implementing that goal. And then finally, pretty simple, uh, you want to you know reflect on and maybe revise your plan at least once a year. You know, it can be more than that, but uh, maybe we recommend that, you know, you think about your, your financial plan at least once a year. And then just to, uh, to wrap things up, I wanted to circle back to our definition uh, of financial planning, you know, of, uh, you know, jumping back to that, of creating a path to financial wellness where you feel comfortable with your personal financial situation. So, <laughs> this course is really designed to help you reach a place of peace where you feel uh, confident in where you are headed and what it will take to get there um, and to where you can make informed financial decisions. So the, this process is really critical you know, in helping you uh, gain that peace and gain that comfort. Um, and that's really what the, the lesson today was designed to do. So uh, we'll... We'll just now give you a chance to ask any questions you might have, and uh, we'll go from there.